Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and the embargo has lifted on the rings of power for our critics, and it's getting very close to the premiere for the everyday folks. I will be watching it tonight when it comes out on Amazon Prime, tried to get it early access, wasn't able to with, you know, the theater production, so I will have a review up for Rings of Power episodes one and two tomorrow, but until then, all we have to go off of are the critic reviews that were released yesterday, and some of them are very surprising. It looks like the narrative is slightly breaking for several of them, and the most interesting of them came from Entertainment Weekly and the reason that this one was so surprising is as you can see here they're the ones who did all these horrific covers for the Rings of Power these moving ones the uh, live action covers or whatever they did several of these they did the group ones and they did that really weird like turn around all dramatically as it goes through all the cast so it looked like they were going to be some really big shields some of the biggest shields for this production and they weren't they didn't end up being that the headline for their review is the Rings of Power review Amazon's prequel is kind of a catastrophe give this appendix an achemendectomy <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is savage, that is utterly and completely savage, and they have some great comments here, like a Galadriel spends the whole time telling people to worry about Sauron, everyone tells her not to worry about Sauron, that's one hour down, seven to go, sound like a billion dollars yet? That is savage, that is utterly savage, and I love it, I love that a mainstream media site like this is coming out and telling the truth, giving an honest review, and that I was very surprised about. And when it comes to honest reviews, there's another one that's quite surprised me, and that's from Grace Randolph herself. She's usually quite a bit of a shield before the show came out. She said she wanted to like it just because people were getting ready to not like it, so she was just wanting to be contrarian. But even she wasn't able to do that after watching the abysmal Rings of Power, and then she had these comments here. Uh, Morphin Clark was so happy to get the big role of Galadriel. In fact, she said she she fainted when she found out, so I feel bad that I have to report that she is the worst casting choice of the show. Jesus. the entire thing down. She makes Galadriel both an elven Mary Sue and an elven Car Karen who would like to speak to the manager. I can't believe it. I can't believe she's both of those horrible things. That is incredibly surprising coming from her. She usually is one that fights against the Mary Sue argument that fans have against certain characters, but she's coming out with it hard and saying that she's both Mary Sue and a Karen. That is not a good combination, especially when it comes from her, so I can't imagine how bad I'm going to think the character of Galadriel is written once I get around to seeing it, but that was incredibly surprising. Another surprising one was the Daily Mail. They had a really scathing one. This one is full of British idioms that I found are really hard for a lot of my American viewers and friends to understand, so we just know that it's really bad it's really bad so they've also come out with an honest review and there's been some chicanery going on on the Rotten Tomato score actually when it was first released to the critics it had a hundred percent and it slowly was in decline when I first saw it, it was at 97 percent it dropped all the way to 83 percent last night on OBG 70's channel when I was over there I'll show you the details of that in a second but something very interesting happened all the reviews disappeared, except for one. There is only one critic review left out of how many? Out of 136, only one of them is available to the public now. I'll show you in a second that that wasn't the case as of last night. But this one review comes from the news.com.au. It is a visually spectacular series with ambition and scale. You can see every dollar they spent in its impressive high-end production. Now, that sounds just like a lot of the other positive shield reviews that we've seen, but that is a wholly positive one. Why is one wholly positive one the only one that's remaining as the score drops so drastically? It's a very weird thing going on, and yeah, she doesn't even show up in Top Critics even though it says she should. So what is going on there? As you can see here on the OBG 70's chill stream from last night, there were at least five previously, and she is one of them. No, she's not even one of them. So why did they take all these away and replace it with just that one? Well, that one's negative. That one's only po barely positive, barely positive. That one's fully positive. Uh, and yeah, this is just a really weird situation going on. Why would they remove all of these? And as you can see here as well, they have several top critics. 
and the score dropped all the way down to 81%, actually. I thought it only dropped down to 83, 81% while on the show last night. So it was Rotten Tomatoes doing some more chicanery as they normally do, trying to protect this series, getting rid of the negative critic reviews and adding a few percentage back to it. I'd be interested to see how it all plays out in the next couple days to see if there's more chicanery going on. But of course, you can't trust Rotten Tomatoes. You can find a gauge in there in the reviews if you do a little bit extra digging. But some really weird stuff going on with all the reviews, actually, with this being negative, with Grace Randolph coming out and saying what she did, and all the chicanery with Rotten Tomatoes. It's just some really interesting stuff going on with it. I'd be really interested to see what happens once I actually see it, where I fit in on this scale. I imagine I'm going to hate it, but you never know. You never, never know until you see it. And it's just, there's definitely something going on here. Some critics are breaking free of the narrative and having their own honest opinions. And that's all that people have ever wanted. That's why so many fans come to YouTube and watch channels like the uh, Neurotic, Geeks and Gamers, myself to a smaller degree because they wanted honesty. And looks like some mainstream media sites have broken through their implicit positivity, to be honest. And that is freaking out Rotten Tomatoes, in my opinion. And that's why I think a lot of those changes are happening there. Some really interesting stuff, and it'll only develop as the days go on and as fans are able to see it. I really want to see how bad that fan score will get this weekend. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Anon. If you like what I do here and want to see good compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern day mental illness issues. Books one, Down in Flames, and book two, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book three, Kill the Dark, coming soon.